Hey, what's up? It's Jesko again from AcousticsInsider.com, where I teach home studio acoustic treatment techniques for audio professionals, but without all the voodoo. I've got another fact for you in my series on what sound engineers need to know about acoustics. This is the series where I talk about the more controversial, often underappreciated facts about acoustic treatment that you need to know in order for this process to be successful for you, in order for you to be successful in getting your rooms to translate. And this is fact number four, that you shouldn't confuse dead rooms and dry rooms. It's really important because this can ultimately make the difference between success and failure, as all of my facts in this series. So before you get into that though, if you need help with the process of treating your rooms and you need some guidance, some perspective on what it is you're actually trying to do, I want you to download my home studio treatment framework, which you can get for free at the link in the description. These are my five steps to treating a home studio and getting it to translate. This is the process that I teach and the same process that I use when I treat studios. It's all in there, how to place your listening position, your speakers, how to deal with the treatment, porous absorption, resonance absorption, at what point to integrate a subwoofer, how to think about measurements in all of this process, what about speaker decoupling, all of these points are in there, laid out for you in a step-by-step -step process so you can focus on the right thing at the right time. Nothing is worse than doing something in your studio, changing something about the sound in your studio and then realizing you forgot something absolutely fundamental that you should have done before and having to basically rip everything out again and start from scratch. So this is a process that will guide you through all the steps that you need to take in order to take your room from untreated to fully treated. So again, if you need guidance with that, make sure you download my home studio treatment framework at the link in the description. All right, back to fact number four, that you need to be careful not to confuse dead and dry sound. What do I mean by this? Well, obviously, when I talk about a dead sound, this is something that we've, we read about all the time, people complaining that they're, they treated their rooms and they ended up sounding dead and they're super uncomfortable to be in and they sound like crap, it's impossible to work in them. Basically, what this comes down to is an unbalanced reverb time. And in practice, that usually means that the high frequencies are overdamped because of too many shallow absorbers in the room and the low frequencies are undamped, unchanged, because there isn't really any bass trapping in the room. And so you get this imbalance in reverb time where you have very short highs, but very high lows. And that makes for a, a very uncontrolled room. It's very unpleasant to be in there. In a way, it even makes the problem in the low end even more obvious because you can now hear that in real detail, in proper detail, because the high end isn't bothering you so much anymore. But that's usually what, what people mean when they talk about dead rooms. And it's definitely something to avoid. On the other hand, there's dry rooms. And by dry, all I mean is that the room has a very short reverb time overall, right? This isn't going to be perfect. It's quite difficult to get this absolutely even. The lows are always going to have a slightly longer decay than the high frequencies, but they're close, right? So in the order of a few hundred milliseconds. And the fundamental difference to a dead room is that with a dry room, you, you have very short reverb times, but it can still sound, it can still feel relaxed, open, and lively. And this has a lot to do with early reflections, scattered early reflections, is how the, the, the energy that gets reflected back to your ear in kind of the first 50 to 100 milliseconds, how that, that component of the decay of the room actually comes back to your ears, how you change that, how that is affected by the acoustics, the acoustic treatment in the room. Because our brains actually judge the feel of the room on a lot more than just pure reverb time numbers. Yes, they have a large impact, but this whole aspect of scattered early reflections also plays a large part in how the room feels when you're in it. So why is it so important to make this distinction? Well, 
as I mentioned before, we often hear people complaining about them treating their rooms and then ending up with a really dead sound. And the immediate reaction is obviously, oh, I need to avoid that. And whatever I do, I do not want to end up with a dead sounding room. So I got to be careful not to over dampen the room and end up with too short reverb times. That's kind of the immediate reaction. The problem is, is that you actually need, you want really short reverb times because that implies that you've done enough, you've reduced the impact of the room enough so that the, its impact on the speakers is as low as possible and so that you basically hear the music as unaltered or your speakers at least as unaltered as possible in your room. And that's kind of the basis, that's kind of the best you can do in order to get a sound that translates well to the outside world, is reliable, is trustworthy, if you will. So in a home studio and any control room, to be honest, in my opinion, you need to aim for dry sound. You need to aim for short reverb times, as short as possible, because that's the only way to get a sound that allows you to mix properly, to hear the music properly, to make decisions reliably and ultimately make music that translates well to the outside world. So on one hand, you reduce the reverb time as much as possible, but then you shape the feel of the room by using diffusion or in practice, simple scattering, because that's really the only thing that really works in small rooms. And that in combination gives you the sound that you want. And by the way, don't think that diffusion or scattering in this in this in this particular case actually raises the reverb time again it doesn't do that so you end up with a very short reverb time but in a room that still feels relaxed open and lively in a way this is kind of the fundamental crux of control room design and what acousticians of control rooms have been trying to kind of solve since the dawn of recorded music and well, acoustics acoustic treatment of spaces where you record music because the only way to hear the speakers unaltered is to remove the room so you really want to remove the room from a speaker perspective but then you don't want to remove the room from the human perspective and it's this kind of dilemma that acousticians have been trying to solve with all these different types of control room designs that we've heard about over the past 30 40 years it's an interesting question to think about. But yeah, that's the lesson that we really only learn once we've gone through this process at least once. The fact that the only way to get a room that translates well is to aim for dry. And the, the thing that I want you to take away here is that if you read about these statements from people ending up with dead rooms, don't let that scare you into thinking that you shouldn't over damp the room. Yeah, you shouldn't poorly damp the room as in get an unbalanced reverb time, but you need a dry room in order to hear your speakers properly, in order to be able to work properly. And as with the other facts that I've mentioned in this series, I want to know your opinion. Please let me know in the comments what you think about this, if you agree or disagree, if you've had this experience. And also, if there's something else that you've learned after going through this entire process of treating your studio, something that you learned that you wish you'd known before in order to make this whole thing a success, please let me know as well. But with that, let's get back to learning to trust our ears and having fun making music in the studio. I'll see you in the next video.